And we We're are live. live. What's We're up, live. guys? How's, How's everybody going, doing tonight? Everyone? Good, good, good evening. Oh, uh, it goes does away, my audio sound all right, by the way? Yeah, I think it sounds good. Okay, because I don't have my mics in, but I needed to charge. So, and that's a problem with this. You know, that's one gripe I have about these is look how wide this thing is. Like, it blocks all the other ports. <laughs> you know what I mean? That does happen. Yeah. Oh, what a quick port right. goes away. We got, uh, ah, is it going to let me do it? Let me mark it. There it is. Okay. Lucky Jules Slots becomes a member. Thank you, Lucky Jules. Thank you so much. We've got a lot of you in here now, so I sure do appreciate it. And if you are a member or you just become a member, make sure you guys check out the uh, the community tab on our on our uh, channel on YouTube. That's where we post all the information for members because um, we're not able to email you or contact you otherwise. So look there for all your links, all your goodies, all that kind of stuff. So thank you so much. Really do appreciate you and as well as all the other members that have joined. And let's see what we got in here. We got Tazzy and Joe, of course. Send mermaids here. Susan. Hey, Susan. Hey, Susan. Fireflies here. Brian's here. Good to see you, Brian. Leanne Grant. Uh, Eric Colvin's YouTube world. That's Just having fun. Guy. Kevin B. Lil Joe's in here this time. All right. Proud Monkey, of course. At Club Mike. Good to see you, Mike. And Amanda's here. We had a really fun stream last night with our elite members. Uh, we all got we on did. a uh, Google Meet and got to see some faces and just uh, chill out for a while. It was a lot of fun. And uh, let's see. Hawkeye says, Thomas, go Cubs. Yes, I'm with you. They're playing the Rangers tonight. I forget that baseball started again. I know. I, I love baseball. It, I don't watch baseball. it that often until like the playoffs, but I'm still a big Cubs fan, so. And here comes all the bad comments about that, I'm sure. <laughs> all right, let's get this uh, get this show started. Hope everybody's doing well. We did pass 8,000 subscribers, I believe it was yesterday, right? Or this morning? Yeah, this morning, this this morning? morning. overnight. Yeah, overnight. Oh, yeah, I woke up to it's 8, incredible. or something. It was great. I mean, uh, so we've gone skyrocketing up, and it's like absolutely amazing every single time. Yeah. People ask me so, like, are you excited? I'm like, I don't know anymore. I don't, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like. I think for us, it's just, it's so good to be able to see um, so many people enjoying the content and getting something out of it. Uh, a lot of people light up our comments that aren't so happy about it, but that's okay. You know, everybody has their voice and we try to give everybody a fair shake, but uh, we certainly are trying to get the best information out there. So thank you so much. Uh, Brantley was scheduled to be on tonight, but uh, he got trapped in a, in a meeting, so he's not going to be able to be here. Uh, but we did want to share something uh, that I think is really cool. It um, is that he sent cool. me, and so, as soon as he uh, uh, checked in, in fact, he sent me this, and he said they were giving us this pamphlet uh, whenever they uh, checked into the hotel. And on the front, this pamphlet says how slot machines work. And on the back, and I've got a picture here for you guys. So this is what they're handing out now at MGM Properties, which I think is really, really cool. I cannot believe this, that a what casino the hell? would do something like this. So I I didn't zoom into this before. Okay. Don't bring ATM cards. They stole that from me. They stole everything. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this wow. is good, though. This is really this is, good, though. This is really good that they are, like, saying, this is random. It's Here's the information that it's random. But also, don't take your ATM card with you. Stick to your budget. I mean, these are like huge things to say. Chasing losses is a lose-lose situation. It absolutely is. Take yep. take a break. Yeah, these are these are awesome, awesome that they're handing this out, and awesome that they put all these things, the buzzwords we've used for so long, are now being published and being handed out to people. If yep. only our logo could have been on there. <laughs> yeah that's the only thing i guess that uh, if i zoom into the bottom here uh you'll see uh well, i guess it's cut off on this one but uh on the other one you see the mgm logo and i guess they partnered with something uh play responsibly or something but um i'm i'm just uh i'm really surprised to be honest when he sent this i'm like there's no way come on and i saw the logo and branding and everything on there and i was like this is fantastic it's good to see um, casinos stepping up their game here. Let me zoom back in so you guys can see it. Um, 
I just think, you know, these are a lot of the points that we're talking about here all the time. And so it's it's good to see a, a casino backing this up. And I hopefully hopefully this starts a trend, a very positive trend uh, of looking out for the player. I mean, yeah, just putting a little thing on the ATM where it says, are you having a gambling problem? Call this number. That doesn't really impact people as much as this does, yeah. in my opinion. This is something people are going to read because they're getting it at check in. And I think this is this is cool. And you're going to have it in your hand as you're going up to your room. So you're just like looking at it. Yeah. And that's that's huge. I mean, this so is I wonder how many huge. people will tear this up and throw it away because they're like, ah, this is all BS. <laughs> I wonder if I can get a stack of them and stamp on Gamble Smart on all of them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Richard says, sure, it's not April Fool's. <laughs> no. Well, no, I'll let you know because I check into Bellagio on, my, on Sunday night. So I'll definitely let yeah. you know. There you go. There you go. Hopefully they hand it to you. It would be nice to see that. I, I'm so anyway, I'm I'm very cool. Forward to get it. So yeah, let's let's talk about that a little bit though before we get into and, and guys, if you have any questions or comments for us, go ahead and start putting them in now. We'll star them and then throughout the show today we'll we'll answer your questions. It can be anything gambling related or anything travel related, whatever you have. Uh, we will definitely try to answer it the best we can. It does get really busy in here, so uh, ask your question early um, so we can try to get to as many as we can before we wrap up tonight. So, uh, But anyway, so let's talk about responsible gambling a little bit because that is a lot, large part of our channel. Um, there's another thing that I've heard recently because um, a lot of people are wondering, how is AI, artificial intelligence, going to play into slot machines in the future? Are they going to be able to control payouts dynamically and stuff like this? And really... I mean, that's something that would never fly with gaming commissions uh, and, and compliance. You know, that's not something they would be able to do. But what I did see that they're going to be able to do is. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to start his comment because I want to get back to it. Um, SD guy is baiting me. <laughs> but oh, yes. I, want, I want to talk about it anyway. Um, so I think that. The thing that artificial intelligence is, intelligence is going to be used for, at least what a lot of the manufacturers are likely going to use it for, is for pushing, uh, being able to detect problem gamblers and doing doing something about it by shutting the machine down, forcing them to cash out or do something or not allow them to go up in denomination, things like that. I think if anything, they're going to use artificial intelligence for that. I know a lot of people won't believe that. They think, no, they're going to do it to screw the player. That is not really what the manufacturers are after. They're trying to provide a fair environment for everybody. Um, and it's not just them. It's the casinos. It's the compliance. It's the gaming commissions. All those people are trying to make sure slot machines are true and fair for everybody that plays, regardless of who you are and what player's card you're using or no player's card or time of day, any of that stuff. It needs to be true and fair for everybody. And so this, I think, would be another fantastic way to use artificial intelligence. And I hope that they do something like this, because I think what a better way to do it than to try to detect problem gambling. But it's really one of those things where people automatically assume that AI is going to come in and be the worst. And there's so much compliance involved that there's a very limited ways they could actually use AI and being able to use that to sort of protect the player more like we've been saying the whole time makes for better gamblers and makes for longer customers and so it's like that'd be great to see an ai system say hey you know maybe it's time to take a break or it just goes even further and says you're taking a break now <laughs> and your card you can't do anything else right right exactly and i think I don't know what the implementation is going to look like, but the fact that they're thinking about this, and I can't say who I've heard it from, but I have heard it from a manufacturer that they're thinking about this. And this is how they want to approach artificial intelligence because they can't just, I think a lot of people feel that manufacturers can do whatever they want on the slot machines, you know, how the game plays out, how the RNG works, all that. They think it's just the wild west that they can do whatever they want and they're in cahoots with the casinos because the casinos want to screw the player and all this kind of stuff. Uh, if you don't believe what I'm saying, just look at some of the comments on our last few videos, man. This is what the this is what most people believe, and I I get why they believe that. But when you're in the industry and you walk through and see how everything is connected, and that there are constant compliance officers and everything looking over everybody's shoulder, it would have to be the biggest conspiracy that I have ever seen, bigger than the government, because 
five different entities would all have to be keeping their mouth shut. I just don't see that happening. You know, it's just slot machines already make money. Like they don't need to do right. anything to them. You know, they're already cleaning up. So they don't have to do all this crazy stuff that a lot of people think. But using artificial intelligence for something like that, I think is very smart. And I hope that they do uh, do implement something like that and that everybody's happy with it so it can end up in the machines that we play. I think it'll be very smart. And uh, Dave, let's get to some questions. How's that? Oh, wait, I want to show something real quick. Okay. So my coworker T-Bone gave me his vacuum that we didn't get. At oh, yeah. Time. The two-hour line that we didn't wait in? The two-hour line. <laughs> this thing, I mean, you can see I'm holding this like this. This thing maybe weighs two pounds, maybe three at most, with the box and everything in it. He said is the cheapest piece of garbage. It will not pick up anything. So I'm yeah. glad we chose to stay out of that line and use our time better. That line was so ridiculous, guys. Just to recap, we were so at Windstar. Bad. They were supposed to start the giveaway at 2 p.m. And uh, we stayed overnight just so that we could get there and get, get our vacuum, right? So we get down there around 9.30 a.m., 10 yeah. a.m., something like that. 10 a.m. at the latest. We had breakfast yeah. first. There's already 100 people in the line. For four hours, they were going to have to stand there in line. Four hours. Now, some and so of those we went and did our thing. and. Smart. We went and did our thing and came back, and the line was like, I mean, I don't know. How many people would you say? Two football fields long? Easily two maybe? football fields. And then it wrapped yeah. back around, and the longest of the line was at the Dallas Cowboys Cafe, which would easily make it 300 yards, I would yeah. say easily. I mean, that's – no. Yeah, I not mean, for that. Not for that, no. <laughs> There's stuff I'll wait in line that long for. This isn't one of them. I guess yeah. it's a step up from a spatula set, but still, I think that would probably work once, and then that's it. No more sucking right. power. <laughs> yeah, it definitely does suck, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, good pun there. And uh, there's Brantley. No problem, man. I figured you got uh, yeah, got held good, up Brantley. in the meeting, so all good. No worries. Glad you're joining us here in spirit. I did already show your thing that you sent me, so I don't want to take the thunder for it. But thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, we are certainly happy to see that MGM is stepping up their game and um, handing out pamphlets like that. I think that's really cool. All right. Now you want to get to some questions? Well, we got yeah, some new definitely. memberships yeah. in here, too. So we got uh, Kevin B., of course. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin B. And Brian. Brian has hung out with us several times at WinStar. And yep. So, Brian, thank you so much. They don't, don't want to miss appreciate out both of you. on all the fun we have. That's right. That's right. All right. And uh, Bradley says, heading to Las Vegas in a few days, hoping to run into Dave while I'm there. So, Dave, how long there. will you be in Vegas? Oh, my God. So, I'm flying out tomorrow night. Uh, I land at 1030, check into the Cosmo, go to sleep at some point. I still got to do the tip for Friday. So, after I edit that, I'm going to go to sleep. Um, up to pick up Rent-A-Car on Friday morning. Pick up uh, three people. And we're headed out to Los Angeles for Tough Mudder, which is in actually San Bernardino. And wow. then coming back on Sunday, hopefully be back into Vegas around 6 p.m. I'm checking into Bellagio, and I'll be there until Tuesday around 3 p.m. Uh, wow. So if you see me, say hi. Interesting. Yep. Yep. What Bellagio. made you do that? Just because it's one um, night? Or... It's because it's one night. I'm not a fan of staying at the Bellagio. Um, I've stayed there once before wasn't wowed by it um the room just was not wow i would rather stay at park mgm the nomad um mgm grand it just wasn't wowed by it but this is the first time i'm actually staying at cosmo i've never stayed at cosmo because the rooms are always so expensive and i always have something at mgm grand for comp <laughs> so i might as well there you go so well, cool You'll if you see me say hi. yeah and i am checking out slots of fun i don't know when but I am. Yeah, I can't wait to get your report on that. Maybe bring, you can do a quick live or something from there. That'd be really awesome. Ooh, to see. I might do that. There you go. There you go. That. that would be great. Oh, All right. Just, just for fun, gifted five memberships. Oh, thank you. Just have fun. Appreciate that. That's Robin, isn't it? So thank you, Robin. Is that Robin? It's Robin. Same face. Thought, it's the same icon. Okay. I don't know. I thought Robin's name is Robin. Yeah. 
see. Let's see. Annie Ann says, uh, seeing you two makes me instantly happy. Oh, <laughs> that's sweet. We appreciate that. I don't know yeah. why, but okay. <laughs> appreciate that. All right. This is a really good question. I actually do not know the answer to this. Tommy Nagy says, what happens to the progressives oh. in Tropicana? I have so, no idea. I was trying to think when I was there, were there any progressives? Um, I I mean, obviously the ones like in, you know, the Dragon Links and all those, but those aren't the same exactly as a progressive that would have to change machines. But I don't think I saw any. If there were, it would have to go to a bounty property. Yeah. Yeah. But would it have to stay in Vegas? It would have, would it have to. It would have to stay in Nevada, almost for sure. It have to stay in Nevada. Yeah. yeah. So it could go to another Bally's property. But is it Nevada or Nevada? Nevada, Nevada. <laughs> We're still gonna be like saying it backwards, ever wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's a very good question, Tommy. I have no idea. I have no idea either. But however, I'm trying to go back and remember, and I'll go back and look at all my raw footage to see if I saw any progressives there because I don't think i noted any um other than the dragon link games and all those uh but who knows what happened to them. they had, had to stay in lost in nevada somewhere or nevada and most likely it would have been to reno i have no clue but yeah i wish i yeah, could ask question. but the whole place got chained up they chained the doors i saw that i saw the uh, ceremony or whatever they so chained sad. glass doors I mean, I'm not saying that it's, that was kind of <laughs> yeah, but they, you know, it's it's a ceremony kind of thing. Yeah, it was a ceremony. There's probably still people inside. <laughs> there, there actually they look like there was. Uh, you know, there's I'm probably, sure there was. Uh, like, wait, let us out! Else. Let us out! Yeah. Don't, don't bulldoze this place while we're in here. <laughs> but I did have a someone tell me today that they are already carting stuff out. Uh, they didn't know if they were actually games or not. Uh, but they're already carting stuff out. Uh, trucks showed up, and they are yep. uh, moving stuff. It might just yep. be furniture, but you know, unknown. Crazy we will stuff, see. Man. Good question from Brian. Recent question was about bonuses not being predetermined. So this is like free games bonuses, as well as like lightning link spin and hold features, that kind of thing. If that's the case, how does the bonus replay exactly the same if the machine reboots or loses power? Um, because it's keeping track up to the minute that it loses power. So if you think about on the next spin, it's already recorded what's going to happen before you even see it play out, right? Um, so it knows exactly where it was up to that point, but it still doesn't know what the future is. So that's how it can replay exactly where it left off, because um, it just knows where it is up to that point. The future is still untold. You never know, even when it loses power. So a good question, Brian. And let's see. Eric Colvin's YouTube world says those old guys behind you are from the Muppets. Yes, they are. Yep. Uh, long time comment. Uh, we received a very long time ago. So Dave and I kind of remind us of these two grumpy old Muppets. <laughs> We're so, nothing like them. For one, yes. they have gray hair and they're Muppets. That's all. How do you know we don't have gray hair and we don't dye it? Well, I got some. There's some in there. <laughs> but, yeah. You should have way more for your age. Just saying. <laughs> it's in there. It, it's, it's in, in there. there. <laughs> let's see. Uh, yeah, let's talk about this. Uh, Tazzy and Joe's Adventure says, I heard from a little birdie. Y'all now have a sponsor. Yes, we do. We have our first that's sponsorship. Right. And that is, of course, probably not too big of a surprise for you guys, but that's the Las Vegas Advisor uh, coupon book um, and platinum membership. And uh, we're super excited about this. Um, we would, you know, we're always going to be very picky with our sponsors. Believe me, we get lots of emails from social casinos, sweepstake casinos and all that. We ignore all of them. We are only ever going to sponsor somebody that we can stand behind and believe in and think that's on the up and up. And these guys yeah. certainly are. Like Dave always says, they have the pulse of Las Vegas. And uh, we did that $100 uh, challenge video using that book. And we had a blast. I've still got the book here. We've got more coupons to it's use. Somewhere. So... And you they know, reached out to us. Yeah, they reached out to us awesome. and said, hey, uh, you know, do you want to partner with us? And we're like, sure thing. So if you do go to uh, gsgs.live forward slash book, 
So that's gsgs.live forward slash book. Um, you can uh, purchase the platinum membership. It's $50 a year. You get access to the book plus all their other uh, goodies like the forum access and all that, which is really cool, by the way. Um, and not only are you getting the book, but you're helping us as well. So we really do appreciate that um, very, very much. So we'll, we're happy to see where it goes from here, but we're, we're excited to be partnered up with them for sure. Great. And you're great not just team. getting a book. You're getting the full access to the online coupons, the forum, uh, all their newsletters, everything. It is a lot of information and yep. it is great to have. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, I've got to take this one from Amanda. Yes, I will absolutely be reporting back on everything slots of fun uh, because I'm going to try their $2 hot dog. Um, they brought back some of their classic deals and the 75 slots, the coin operate slots. I'm going to do a whole thing on it. I have no idea how long it's going to be, how excited I'm going to be. I'm probably not going to win, but oh, I actually found this. So side story way back when, okay? And how long have coin slots been gone from Vegas? Easily 10 years? 15 years? Which, roughly? I don't know. It's a good question. Let's say, let's say 15 years. I started saving quarters before my last trip when coin slots were still there. <laughs> oh, man. I have found that thing. And it weighs, it weighs more than the vacuum is how much it weighs. <laughs> it's about seventy dollars in quarters, and I'm taking that with me. There you go. I'm taking all those there quarters. You go. They finally have it's, a purpose. It's really funny too. I, I'm going to put a comment up in a second, but I've the first initial videos that I've seen out with people playing the quarters. It, it's funny watching like you know millennials try to figure out coin slots because they're just not used to it, <laughs> and it's kind of cute to watch. And it's um, you know putting you know you have a quarter machine and they're trying to put nickels in it and or put a quarter in a nickel and it just keeps falling through it's like no you can't you don't feed it you feed it two as times you play in it. a nickel like a quarter right yeah <laughs> you feed it as you play it you know and they were yeah. trying to put more than what the bet is and it just kept falling through it's like it's not like putting a dollar bill in it's different it's not adding to your credit meter it's just adding to the one your wager that you're about to do and it's it's fun to watch that i, I think that's really cool but i think it's good they're bringing it back we're going to get some uh, some people used to coin slots, and hopefully it, it takes off and other casinos will start doing it too because it's fun to bring try, that stuff back. I'm going to try to be like, you know, reporter. I'm going to report on the news and everything else and be serious <laughs> and unbiased. But it's really hard for me because Slots of Fun is bringing back. Like Circus Circus already had coin slots, and now they're bringing back basically a whole casino of it, kind of dialing the clock back with Slots of Fun which has been a crappy property. It really has. It's sort of an afterthought, and there's nothing been there for years. So this yeah. is a great use for it, and I'm really going to have a hard time not just be like completely geeking out, like, yeah, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I would. <laughs> oh, I totally probably am. I was like, I'm going to try not to. Yeah. It's it's hard for me to keep a level, level head with stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, look who just popped in. Hey, hey, that. How's it going? How's it going, man? Sorry, it's it's been a crazy day, but I'm here. I'm here. You're I think in a your very room might be red, red room. Yeah, it, you know, yeah. This is so. This is the Park MGM, just the regular suites, and it's a giant red it's couch and a giant red wall. <laughs> and but wait, but wait, guys, there's more because hold on, hold on, wait for it, wait for it. I promise, it's worth the wait. Ooh. It's a red drape. <laughs> well, Bradley, yeah. So this is no. You're looking a little you pale get there. This room in green and blue as well. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. Do they really? So they're really going for the color scheme, huh? Yeah, Park MGM uh, really just uh, made it interesting on the colors. <laughs> that's for sure. So, and I have terrible light in here, so apologize about that. I look really that's dark right. and terrible. But Everybody uh, knows yeah, what I, you look and sound like. Oh yeah, yeah. there's the family. <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah. No, these are really cool. I I don't know where we're at in the show, so. Yeah, apologies on that. The beginning, but, but yeah, you know. no, these are there's three of them. Um, this one's titled "Anything You Need to Know About Gambling: uh, How Randomness Plays a Part, What Is House Advantage, um, uh, How Slot Games Work," and then awesome. this cool little number is yeah, "How Slot Machines Really Work." And uh, it's funny because 
it's almost like they just took all the information right from what we've been saying this whole time. <laughs> yeah. And how to get and not even how to gamble smarter. What? what? That's ours. Yeah. How to gamble <laughs> how to gamble smarter. And there's even a, a list of things on here. Uh number one, uh gambling outcomes are random, so play for fun instead of money. Uh number two, understand how the games work. Uh three, stick to your budget. What I mean, it just man? goes on and on. <laughs> Um, oh, there's even number five right here. Do not bring ATM cards with you to the casino mm -hmm. floor. This will I help you one. stick to a budget. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. Take five. Breaks are always a smart decision. Oh, my gosh. So these I mean, are all available at MGM now. If we could, I would say we need to sue. We wouldn't have any <laughs> legs to stand on, but <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah. At least change the wording up a little bit. Well, hey, like like MGM, like uh, MGM Resorts always says, gamble smart, gamble safe. <laughs> Jerks. No, in all seriousness, no, I, I'm more happy. It is a, it's a cool thing. It's a cool it's thing. I, I that, you know, it is. And it, it doesn't say that, that by the way. I was, just, I was just joking with yeah. you. I know. I know. So cool. And uh, we'll do this comment real quick, and I have one for you, Bradley. So, Bradley. All right. Uh, Cox says, I saw a video on YouTube for Slots of Fun, and the woman was playing 25 cent top dollar and only putting in one quarter. Guess she doesn't watch her channel. God. Yikes, man. It burns every time I see that. And I see it so much. So much. I think the one that killed me the most was that $25 Wheel of Fortune in the Aria High Limit Room. And there was a couple there playing one coin for 30 minutes. And got the spin over and over again. Every time they got the spin, they would look up, look very puzzled, and then go back to just playing one. I'm just wow. like, oh my god, you're just killing your potential return to player by doing that. Like, oh man, Think read the, the game. Thousands of dollars. Guys. The uh, thousands of dollars they missed out on. Yeah, not good, not good. And then uh, Katie said she ran into you, Brantley. I did. I re I remember Katie. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I ran into quite a few people over there at uh, MGM. I'm sure it was nice. all at Cherries, right? Cherries Jubilee. It was all. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah, I will go ahead and share this with you. This is the. So for this Vegas trip, I only played the Cherries Jubilee. That's the only game I've played. I have not even played pinball. I've sat with friends and played pinball with Whoa. them, but <laughs> I did not guy? play it. Who's this imposter? I did not play pinball. <laughs> imposter. Whoa. Right. <laughs> Someone to go fight Brantley. <laughs> right? No, nope. only play Cherry's Jubilee. Yeah, Brantley's Old in trip. the blue room. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not this room thing. is really, really red. <laughs> like they went. I've I've stayed in that room before, or one of the rooms like that, and it is really red. The blue is probably my favorite, but the green is also just as annoying as the red. It's yeah, it's something else. Oh, and Mark, did you tell Dave what I told you? Uh, what is now missing from Park MGM? Yes, he told I, me that right before this. Yeah, yeah. Winner, but winner. You know, chicken I'm kind of glad to see him go. Is gone. I never did well on those. He yeah, never did well. You never did, but we always did. Yeah, I, mean, I always did. <laughs> Sheldon even came around and said, "Hey, I like this game now." Then they took it out. <laughs> right. Nobody it's, was playing yeah, until we started playing them. Yeah. It's been replaced by a very, uh, you know, the uh, the colossal, the colossal diamond, the colossal sevens machine. Oh, that big giant, thing. big red. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, been replaced by one of those in a Vegas night theme. Yeah. Well, that's just great. <laughs> <laughs> More branding for the Vegas nights, like they need it. Yeah. Right. Not too surprising with that. Let's see. There's some good questions. I missed them. Yeah. Uh, this one's for you, Dave. Let's get your thought on this one. Go ahead and read it. Should, okay, from Armand. Armand. 1972. Armand, 1972. Should Mohegans and Foxwoods come together and buy MGM Springfoot, Springfield? Uh, in my opinion, no. Uh, for one, both those properties are in Connecticut. Um, I don't think it would benefit them to have a property in Massachusetts that was not attached or, you know, close to their, you know, kind of anchor properties. 
I don't think MGM Springfield, actually, I talked to uh, Firefly a little bit today, and she gave me some info about MGM Springfield, that it's pretty much a crap hole. And there's mm-hmm. no reason why anyone would buy it or MGM keep it. So apparently it's in a bad part of town. It's extremely small, uh, like way smaller than Park MGM even. Um, so I'm kind of not seeing any positives there. The only positive I could come up with is I believe MGM Springfield's license also is the Bet MGM's anchor into Massachusetts. So that alone is worth several hundred million dollars to MGM. So mm-hmm. if that license is truly tagged to that, then I don't think they'll be getting rid of that property. Uh, but no, I don't see Mohegan and Foxwoods buying that just because, for one, I doubt that Mohegan would want to expend extend more money uh, because they kind of are pushing out into lots of different territories. They're in Las Vegas. They're in... Um, different parts of the country all over Mohegan is starting to open up and they do a lot of casino management like MGM and Caesars do Foxwoods, you know, kind of really their only location while they do have different partnerships and around, they're not as robust as Mohegan is. So I don't think that would fit into their portfolio either. So I wouldn't think so, but also uh, I would be surprised if MGM is going to sell it in the first place. Didn't MGM used to own the Foxwoods property? They had an agreement with the Fox Tower, that long walkway we took. That oh, was okay. the MGM Tower. And so it was a partnership deal, uh, kind of oh, like how they're taking okay. over Cosmo. It's you know being managed by MGM. So it was two separate casinos in one. Wow. And then they ditched that. Yeah. But I doubt that those two properties would be interested in it. They, they know what it looks like. They've been there. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. And uh, let's see. Amanda, um, who is about to go to Vegas and try her $100 challenge, which is awesome. And again, if you guys are interested, um, look for the $100 challenge video um, after the live stream. And um, or if Susan, if you can find a link to it and post it in, that would be awesome. Uh, And don't forget to get your book at gsgs.live forward slash book if you want to get the book. It helps us out as well. So All right, so for your $100 challenge in downtown, were any casinos you wanted to hit but didn't? God, yes, there were a lot in there that we didn't. Oh, yeah. We didn't go to Mostly because Dave was scared of them or something. We didn't go to Golden Ellis Island because there was no coupon. coupon. Ellis Island's not downtown. Oh, Oh, okay. We didn't go to downtown Grand because it was far far out of the way, relatively speaking, for our time. Um, but other than that, we hit every casino. Uh, Binion's is the only one we didn't go into because it's horrible. Um, it's so dark in there. It's so cramped. The, it, the smoke is so bad. You can smell, you know, the Marlboros from 1972 still. So, <laughs> oh man. Uh, but really, that's the only casino we didn't hit. Was yeah, we kind of just took the best coupons in the book and started with those, right? Yeah. So. We kind of had we didn't a goal even touch any of the food stuff. There, there's nope. a bunch of two for didn't ones and also for bar drinks and stuff like that. Uh, shows we didn't touch any of that stuff. Still have it for the next visit. Yep, gotta save it for the next visit because we gotta go back downtown and or we gotta go get more of those coupons used by driving around. Yeah. And uh, Sabrina says, How would an AI artificial intelligence, intelligence know what I can afford to lose? So uh, this is where AI comes into it. They can detect betting patterns. They can see that you're going up in denomination or you're betting more and more compared to what you've bet in the past. And those are kind of things that artificial intelligence can look for and try to detect that you may be spiraling out of control and need to take a break. Um, that's that's how they're going to be able to use that artificial intelligence. So try to visualize like a scenario, like if I were to implement this, the way I would handle it is to look at your past history over like the, the last five, 10 minutes of betting and then compare that to where you're moving along. So if you keep raising your bets and you keep raising the denominations and you're maybe you're starting to fast stop and you weren't fast stopping before, those are all things that artificial intelligence can detect and say, maybe you're kind of getting out of control or you're spiraling out of control because you're doing those things. They don't know how much money you can afford to lose. Nobody will ever know that except yourself, but your betting patterns do tell a lot, a lot of the story. And then they can use that to try to uh, to do things. It's, and we don't know how they're going to implement if they do this at all. We don't know how the implementation would be. But to hear that they're looking into this 
as a use for artificial intelligence, I think is very smart and very commendable if they do end up doing something like this. So we will see, Sabrina, only the time will tell. All right. And uh, <laughs> Dave, do you ever sleep? No, he does not. I can prove that. <laughs> I do sleep when I'm not doing anything. It's just I'm usually doing stuff. Yeah. When he's in Vegas, he doesn't sleep. I do sleep. I sleep good in Vegas because (laughs) I've gone just so hard the whole time. As soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm out. That's funny. All right. Let's see. There's a good one here about. Oh, you got one. Oh, good to see you, uh, JJ Sloppley. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, Go ahead, Dave. Uh, right here from uh, Soup Freaks Mess. Uh, question, since Tropicana has closed, rip Tropicana, yep, very sad, what process and procedures they have to go through to perform to close out a casino floor as well as deal with unplay, unpaid progressives? Uh, so as far as procedures they have to go to, they actually shut gambling down at 3 a.m. the day before it closed or you know the day of the closure. Uh, the whole floor was shut down. Uh, cages were locked. Uh, machines were turned off. Everything was basically just shut down. Uh, the gaming commission was there to witness all of this, to turn everything down. Um, everything is shut off and will not be powered up again uh, until they're off the casino floor. There's a bunch of procedures in place about that. Uh, all the tables themselves, once the um, co- the chips trays are out and once the uh, card shufflers are out, they're pretty much just going to be carted away and done. The cage itself will be completely counted down. All the chips, every chip on hand will be counted and cash in the vault counted to match the chips. Um, so that's a big process they go through that with all that of breaking it down. The unpaid progressives, we still don't know about that because I don't know if there were any on the floor that were progressives that before they closed down, they might have wrapped those out in advance. But if they didn't, they would probably be going to some other property within the state it wouldn't really relieve the state because of gaming laws uh but it's a definitely a huge process the uh gaming commission is no joke about that they are on site the whole time uh someone will be staying there with all the property until the last machine leaves now they may not be staying there 24 7 but they'll definitely be nearby and anytime a machine is moved they are there so it's it's a process it's definitely a a big deal that doesn't happen often anymore and Brandon, and I, found I, wanted that all your I wanted to get your opinion on the unpaid progressives because I I'm stumped on this one because uh yeah I mean what do you do so, it's it's gone so, so obviously Nevada law has has it to where the progressive has to be transferred you can't just get rid of it but I would assume this is now this is just me assuming I cannot say for sh- for sure but I would assume that there has got to be some kind of a clause in the law that if you sell the property, it just gets wiped. Yeah. You know, like if, if the, if the whole property is closing, you know, they, they can't, yeah. it, if they can't transfer it to anywhere else, you know, cause obviously they don't have, you know, it's not like MGM where it's like, Oh yeah, we can move it from Bellagio to, you know, to Aria right. or whatever. Um, there's gotta be some kind of a stipulation in the law that just allows them to just be like, okay, you know what? It's, it didn't pay. It's, it's wiped, you know, yeah. wiped clean. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense to me, too. I mean, that limited amount of scope of there's no place else to transfer it, it's just gone. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I would assume. Makes sense. And Brandon says, question for you. During bonus features on slot machines, when given the choice to match symbols to win certain prizes, is the payout predetermined? Uh, pretty much in most cases, it's always predetermined, uh, especially when you're pitching, uh, picking for like progressive amounts, dancing drums, for example. Um, the only exceptions are after you get done picking, if it flips everything over and shows you what was behind everything, then it wasn't predetermined. You were actually in control of picking. So quick hits is a good example of this. Like the, during the free games on quick hits, it will flip everything over and you say, ah, there's where the wild was, et cetera. Uh, then you were in control of it. But if you just, that's why on those games, like dancing drums and stuff, I don't waste time. I just go, blah, you know, just hurry up and tap the screen. Cause it's already decided. There's, I don't need. There's no strategy in picking. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's. I mean, that's how those things work. Think about. Of course, you're going to get the mini and the minor more often than the grand. I mean, it's heavily weighted to those smaller amounts. Um, 
you know, that's just the way it is. So hope that helps, Brandon. And, oh, man, this one came up a lot about the uh, silver strikes being taken out. Don't worry. They're coming back. <laughs> they're coming back. <laughs> they're coming back. They're coming back. Yeah, everybody was freaking out. In fact, it was funny because Dave, uh, I turned to Dave when we were at uh, Choctaw and we heard that they were, they took them all out. And I was like, man, I'm glad I still have these coins because they may be worth a fortune someday. Right. <laughs> they might be worth money. Because <laughs> you can't get them anymore. Uh, but no, they're dollars right back. now. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Um, but actually, Four Queens is not the only place that has those, by the way. Uh, there right. are other properties uh, downtown that have them. So I don't remember specifically which ones, but Four Queens definitely takes the cake for having the most of them. I think there's probably 15 of them in there. There's, there's a lot. They're spread out throughout the whole casino, but they'll be back. All right. Uh, Dave, you want to take a couple? Yeah. And Brantley, if you uh, see any, just actually... let me know. From Richard, yeah, I see. That... there's a. Uh couple on here there we go okay. uh rich is in reference to the tropicana that they ran out of chips to sell and what they most likely did was when the um gaming commission shut it all down at 3 a.m they counted out the vault and everything and so i did hear that they were selling chips and that was probably either old chips or the ones they've already counted out and so that's i heard a lot of people who went and bought some i was like i wish i would have done that i would have just liked to have a couple of five dollar ones but I wasn't even thinking about it. <laughs> Brantley looks like a low yeah. key Satan. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I tell, I tell you, this is this is very, a very, very room. red room. It's it's a crazy red room. Red room. <laughs> that, yeah, red uh, room. Red room. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's how we should have opened the show. I should have just sat yeah. here and done it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it, Brantley. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and here's some more comments. Uh, oh, that red room looks it's too much for my eyes. It doesn't look relaxing. Hope you I don't know why they did this. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. This is interesting. Like, um, do you feel any different being in the room? Like they say, like, if you're in all red, it makes you your blood pressure go up and makes you feel a little more anxious, makes you feel a little more like violent, even. And then blue is very calming, you know, green is relaxing, all that. Anything you feel like I don't you know, I don't feel any I don't feel any different because high blood pressure and being anxious and just irritated <laughs> all the time is kind of my normal personality. Like day. Perfect, like, yeah. you know, that's kind of my normal every day. So it's like, oh well, it just it's a perfect color. Right? Like, yeah. right? <laughs> gamble it. gamble angry, Amanda says. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, why would they do that? Why would they use like this? Like everything is oversaturated. They even painted the air conditioner yep. as red. Okay, oh, I do know why they painted all these colors like that. So the this used to be Monte Carlo. <laughs> and the smoke in those rooms was very, very evident. It's in the walls. And so they used basically kills paint Thick in paint. primary colors to add flair and all that but also to basically cover every inch of it that smelled just complete it smelled so bad they ripped the carpet out i mean that's how bad it was all the carpet yeah, at least knew. the carpet's not red the carpet's brown yeah <laughs> <laughs> go figure on that one yeah at least make it white so there's some contact. you know I, I all right you know what really quick um you know since since we're on the topic of it I will give you my personal. This is the first time I've stayed at Park MGM. Um, the rooms do not match what the downstairs is. No, at no. least not to me. Like you know, downstairs it's it's very like it's fairly light. Like you go to Italy, it's it's bright. It's you know it's very you know I don't want to use the. I mean it is it's a clean feeling. I mean the rooms are clean too, but honestly, like the bed is like tucked away in like this little like alcove section yeah. it feels very um park mgm is a nice resort downstairs but the rooms feel very like holiday in like they're really not anything spectacular and i don't know why they chose these god awful colors and i have a beautiful view of the rooftop <laughs> kind of hey i can see vegas out in the distance that's yeah it's it could be worse probably. it looks <laughs> it looks yeah I am definitely interested to see when they get their first remodel because 
the rooms definitely look like it was a budget remodel. You know, they didn't do much. They did paint and bedding. They didn't really do much. One else. kind of everything paint. else. Was yeah. They but just said, give me everything, everything that you got in one color. I think that's what they, what they said. <laughs> to this. Oh, I will add this. So, um, New York, New York. I, I love New York, New York because of the restaurants, but I went to um, Gallagher's last night for dinner in New York, New York. Blows John George steak out of the water by far. Best steak, lobster, escargot, all really? of that. I'm like, and it was it was a fourth of the price. I've eaten uh, it was, times and it just wasn't good. Oh, no. It's, it's different now. I don't know. It, it was... It, whoever the chef was last night that cooked the food Michelin star for, for them. But that's great. I was like, I'll, wow, I have to give it another shot. Then the best I went and it was not that great. Oh, I, I it blew John George out of the water for steak. It, New York, New York is just awesome for food. Like it's, they have oh, so yeah. much, like even this morning, um, one of the, I, I can't remember the name of it, but it was, uh, it's an, it's an Asian restaurant, but in the morning they have a breakfast buffet Chin-chin. and, Yes, and nobody Chin was Chin. there. Like there that were was... lines of people at all the other restaurants, and I went down to have breakfast there this morning, and it was actually a really good breakfast buffet, and it was yep. cheap. That's it's it's 29, twenty-nine bucks or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pancakes, great. waffles, eggs, bacon, yogurt, everything. Yeah, yep. I, I'm telling you, New York, New York is top notch for that. Yeah, America is good too. Um, and they're American, they're the yeah, same yeah. restaurant that does the room service, and the room service is the food. The, the food is just it's. I I totally agree with that. New York, New York is great food. I love the atmosphere there. Really high ceilings. Uh, the mm-hmm. casino is real nice. Sucks are getting rid of a lot of the older machines. Like every time we go, I know. more that are gone. But um, that's where I started. I mean, that's gosh, ten. I don't know, ten years plus, fifteen years of going out there. I used to always stay in New York, New York, and I really need to go back there because I heard they remodeled everything. So, right uh, after right after know. this show is done, I'm going back there for dinner. I actually have have dinner plans um, dinner plans here soon, and it's going to be back at New York, New York because that's awesome, awesome. Uh, well, yeah. you know what? I mean, I've been hitting New York, New York hard. It might be Italy. I don't know yet. Italy's good. Uh, Italy Chin is Chin good. Chinese food is stellar. Yeah, that's good. really good. Yeah, as long as you're not Same allergic to it, because they use a lot of it. <laughs> they use a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's a question from Janet: When did the gaming commission start, and was the whole U.S. included? Uh, gaming commissions are by state, uh, so there's not a U.S. gaming commission, uh, lottery commission, all that. It's each individual state does it. I do not know when it actually started. Um, as soon as the mob been... got chased out of Vegas. Yeah, as soon as, soon as the <laughs> mob started getting chased out. Actually, I know the Gaming Commission was there before the mob was chased out. Um, but I don't know how much further, and I really don't know how much they did back then versus to what yeah. they do now. Um, kind of as everything is written in pencil, whereas now it's like in the state charter and everything. And uh, $2 Super Chat from Eric Colvin's YouTube World. Thank you so much. Highest slot denomination, $5,000 to spend. That is the highest. Aria has Bellagio. some. Uh, Bellagio, Bellagio has, has one, one, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think Those the wind has one. Resorts World has one. Resorts has one. Caesars probably you know, here's has, a, but I don't know Caesars very well. Here's an interesting interesting topic to kind of get everybody involved. And I want, I want to hear your answer, uh, Mark and Dave, as well. But um, mm-hmm. everybody should leave in the comments, if you were a multi-millionaire or a billionaire, would you still gamble? Dave, what would you do? If, if you had all the money yeah. in the world, if you were a billionaire, would you still gamble? I would still gamble. And funny enough, I'd probably still gamble the exact same I do now. Um, Bullshit. To me, oh, the, to me <laughs> I don't see... I don't, get see the jar playing, out. I don't see playing a $5,000 <laughs> machine. Let's say you're a billionaire. You're playing a five thousand dollar machine. Doesn't matter what you hit, you're paying taxes on that, so you're never winning that value. <laughs> See, there you go, Jody's putting it in. <laughs> and to me, when you're playing high denom, even if you're a billionaire like that, and you're just going to cut it out to taxes, you're like, nope, I'm just going to play small. Everyone else now, 
can I see doing something fun once in a while? Like, hey, I'm going to go play, you know, the hundred dollar wheel of fortune. Sure. But I, I would say this now, obviously I don't have a billion dollars, but if I do, we'll, we'll get, we'll test that out in real life and I'll be happy to, and I'll let you know. <laughs> we'll put, we'll put some signs up. Hey, Dave is offering to uh, be a billionaire or a millionaire. Yep. So somebody can donate a million dollars to Dave. Yeah. And, and Dave. Just for an experiment. Yeah. <laughs> Just for yeah. experiment purposes. You give Whatever me a billion dollars, I'll give you give back, back 200 million. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think for me, the answer is yes and no. I think initially I probably would, but I think I would get bored of it incredibly fast because part of the gambling is the rush, that feeling of risk. And if you've got more money than you know what to do with, I, it's hard to have that rush and risk. Now, I'm a little bit different because I actually enjoy playing slot machines because I have them here at the house. But I think if I had all the money in the world, I would probably just buy them for the house <laughs> instead of just going to the casino yeah. and doing it. Um, I just, I think the urge would just, it would wear off. The rush would just wear off after a while. It's just, but yeah, I'd probably go to town. I probably would, you know, at least to get the comps and the status, you know, you might as well get that out of it. <laughs> Right. That's pretty easy to do, that's for sure. So, that, that, yeah, that'd be really I'm two spins on that machine, and you'd have all the status you'd ever want, pretty much. You're right. Pretty much, yeah. Platinum in two spins. <laughs> right. <laughs> Love it. Good question. All right. And Julie says, do pinball and top dollar have the same volatility? No, they do not. Uh, in my experience, top dollar seems to pay more frequently. So yeah, uh Brantley did a good short on this. Um, he was wrong because he said pinball's better, but uh, <laughs> actually, actually, I did not say one I, was better did, than the other. I, you're fair. It's fair. It's fair. You didn't say that. Um, just teasing. But um, yeah, top dollar, uh, more frequent bonus rounds, but the average bonus amount is not as consistent as pinball. Is. Uh, when pinball, you pretty consistently get anywhere from like 45 on the on the low end up to 200 or higher on the high end. But usually it's in like the 80 to 90 range pretty consistently when you get pinball. But if you play top dollar before, you know what happens. Uh, 10 credit offers, 15 credit offers. If wow. Dave's playing, they're all five credit offers. Five credit um, offers. That can happen. So it's, it's a little bit like the pay on top dollar is a lot more stretched out. And so because of that, the trade-off is you're going to get the bonus a little bit more frequently on top dollar than you would on pinball. Um, I think uh, double top dollars one in 41 or 42 and pinballs one in 64 as the overall average number of spins to get the bonus. So you can see there's a pretty big jump there. But again, you got to consider there, there's always like an ebb and flow to this stuff. Like if it's going to be a good bonus, then the trade off is it's going to be hard to get the bonus. Right. It's not it's not going to there's not going to be a slot machine out there that hits very frequently and pays progressives every single time you hit. There's not a slot machine that exists. We wish it would, but there isn't. There is a trade-off, and that's where the volatility comes in. You have to decide how much risk you want to put into playing a machine and then play the right machine according to that because they're not all designed the same. You know, I prefer top dollar because I like the more frequent bonus. Pinball has done me good but also done me dirty a lot more than top dollar has. And so I kind of like the more consistency and you know frequency of bonus and getting burned on the 15 credits rather than trying to chase to get the pinball bonus and knowing I'm going to get something at least decent. So it's really, it's up to you what you want to play. But yeah, they are, they are definitely different in volatility. They're still very close though. They're still very good in volatility compared to a lot of other stuff out there. All right. Dave, why don't you take a couple? I got one prayer from EJ laughs a lot. Any drawback to cutting, closing credit line? Are we treated comp differently if we have a credit line? Uh, so yes, you are treated differently if you have a credit line. Uh, essentially what it is, is letting the casino know ahead of time of what you might be gambling. They can, you know, when you go and take a line of credit out, so you say, I want a marker. You can do this at table games. You can do this at the cage. Uh, you can take a marker out for, let's say a thousand dollars, whatever your credit line is, it would be a portion of that, or you can take all of it out. I don't recommend that, but essentially it lets the casino know what kind of money you're bringing or what kind of money you are able to bring. It gives them a lot of insight into you because it's a credit application. They're extending you a line of credit like any bank would do. Kind of think of it as half of what you would get off a credit card. 
So if you can get a credit card for $30,000, most likely the casino is going to give you one for $15,000 with no problem. There are obviously pluses and minuses to having a credit line with a casino. One is if you do not have it at a lower limit, you can get in financial trouble real quick. However, one of the benefits, if you treat it like your budget. So let's say you're going to Vegas for a week and you bring $5,000. You go to the casino cage and get a $5,000 marker, all right, with no intention of gambling more than that. That is your limit. That is your budget. You play that $5,000. At the end of the week, you pay that back with the $5,000, whether what's level over profit or with the original budget. That is a zero interest. You have 30 days to pay it off on almost all occasions. So if you pay it off right at the end of your trip, that looks really good, just like it would to any other creditor. You have paid off your bill without earning interest, and they love that, and that does get you noticed a lot more. Whether or not your comps will be different, it all depends on how much you're bet betting, where you're betting, and essentially, is it a tier lower tier property or higher tier property? You pull 5,000 out of the cage at Bellagio, no one's going to blink. You pull 5,000 at cage at Excalibur, they're going to know your name. Everyone's going to know who you are. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it. But treat it oh, just like I you would credit it. I got to get into this though. Oh man, I, I have to. I have to do a PSA on casino credit. Now, I'm interested to think if you agree on this too, Brantley. But guys, please, for the love of God, don't do it. <laughs> uh, and here's here's a couple of reasons why. Um, this is not a traditional loan where if you don't pay it back, it just goes on your credit report as an unpaid loan. Uh, this is small claims court type situation. Um, so if you do a line of credit, you lose it, and you're unable to pay it back before you leave or within the 30 days, you're going to be in some serious crap. Like it is and not. interest rate is high. Yeah, it's not like you can just file for bankruptcy and be done with it. It's not like that. Um, it's, it's totally different. So be very, very careful if you end up doing something like that. Make sure that you have the money somewhere that you can extract in case the worst happens and you lose that five grand or whatever it is that you take out. Um, for that reason, I just I I can never get behind doing that. It, it just for me, I, I just I want to just urge you to be very cautious. You have to have the money somewhere in case everything goes to crap. OK, that's yeah, that's man. that's what you should do. There is another thing that you can do, though, that a lot of people don't know. And one of my old casino hosts told me this is that you can actually wire money in to the cage ahead of time in a lot of properties. Um, and then draw from that as you will, as you want to. And you can also put limits on it to only be able to draw a certain amount a day. So I would do that instead. You have the money to gamble with, which you should anyway. Um, set up a wire, wire in the 5,000, and then just go to the cage anytime you need to withdraw the money. And then at the end of the trip, they can wire it back to you. And there's no fee for that. Uh, maybe if you don't have certain status, I don't know, but MGM properties, he said there's no fee to do that, the wire in and wire out. So look into that instead of doing casino credit. Because I, man, just think about that. If you, if it can I, get I don't trouble, think just I like regular credit, you can get in trouble fast. It's just <laughs> yes. like regular credit. Yeah. Well, and also not, not only that, but I mean, just a general PSA. I mean, when you stop and you think and you break it down, you're taking a loan out to gamble. That right there is a bad sentence to come out of your mouth. Like right, yeah. you should not be taking yeah. any loan out to gamble. You should not use yeah. your credit card to gamble. You should not use borrow. I mean, that's the same as, you know, going to a friend and borrowing money, going to a family member and borrowing money, going, you know, borrowing money to gamble is a giant red flag in, in any sense, whether it's done in an office or whether it's done, you know, from a friend or family member, it shouldn't be done. Yeah. Yeah, I see Brian, Brian saying, yeah, I can imagine that the uh, interest rate, there are no interest rates. It's you pay it back or you're in trouble. You pay it back or you go to jail. <laughs> That's yeah, what it is. is. No interest. <laughs> well, there, there, there is an interest. It is equal to a credit card, like that high late, like taking cash right. out of your credit card. It is the exact same thing. If you're familiar with mob movies and all that, you've heard of the VIG, okay, which is an outstanding amount of uh, interest. That's essentially what it is, except extremely legal, and they have you written, signed contract. You're going to pay it back. They don't need to break your legs. They'll take your house. 
They'll just yeah. go. Boom, <laughs> house gone. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is not the old Vegas. We're going to come break your legs. They're going to break your thumbs. You're going to sleep with the fishes. No, they'll take you to court and they'll basically take they'll everything their money from back. you, including your shoes. Yeah, yeah they will take their no, money you back. You don't get it. It's yeah. You'd rather deal with the mob because at least they break your legs, you know? <laughs> at least you have right. a chance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take a $100,000 marker, you know? That's probably worth a kidney, right? Yeah, easily. <laughs> And from Texas slot gal, why your money seems more safe than carry cash. That is very true. It is. It would be yeah. much more safe. Um, and um, many, many cages do that. Many casinos do that. Just make sure to check on the fees. That's the main yeah. thing. Yeah. And like, let them know your status with the casino because mm-hmm. a lot of time they can waive it. Um, especially if you have a casino host, I bet they can waive any fees. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Chris, oh, this is hilarious. Uh, also, I, I just say, damn you, Mark, for putting me on Vegas slots online. Man, I know. <laughs> I got Brantley on it, too. <laughs> it's a fun one. It's a, it's yeah. a fun one. It's Fair free. Lot. It's free. You don't have to buy virtual coins when you run out of money. You don't even have to Netflix sign up or anything. You can just yeah. go on and play. A good ad blocker on your browser and go to town. You can play a lot of games that are out there right now. So it's, it's fun. Definitely good way to scratch that itch for sure yeah and we have over 400 people in here right now oh thank That's you so much incredible. Guys. having a great thank night guys so how oh, it's already been an hour geez i know all right oh, we got a good one from tammy middleton here it's always a popular question yeah heading to vegas since i found y'all going to hit up cherry's jubilee of course any other suggestions staying at the cosmo uh i think if you're going to be staying at the cosmo take a quick walk over to park mgm where brantley's out and go play the Monte Carlo machine with a six hundred and fifty thousand dollar progressive for three dollars a spin. Absolutely yeah. worth a stab at it. You probably won't yeah. win it, but it's a chance. <laughs> You're telling me there's a chance. There's not many six hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, that that machine's been there for a long time, and they've combined a lot it's of been there for a while. <laughs> machine. So I mean, it's <laughs> it's lasted this long without it. But I mean, six hundred fifty thousand on a three dollar bet. That's it's better odds than mega bucks, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, way better odds than mega bucks. Um, um, but there's a lot of great games to try. I mean, um, Cosmo, in Cosmo by itself. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally forgot about games. this, but Cosmo still has the five line top dollars. Hmm. Yep, it's the two of them that are up close to the front, in the middle. Yep. I think they're the quarters two, uh, and dollars, escalators. or is that right? Or quarters only. I want to say they're quarters. Yeah. Or is, no, it's multi dom. Yes, it is quarters. Yeah, and dollars. It's quarters yeah. and dollars or something like that. Yep. Um, so definitely play uh, those while you're at Cosmo. Not just gambling. Okay. There is a lot of great stuff to hit up. So remember to keep your eyes open. Look everywhere. Look up. Look down. There's so much stuff to see. Hidden and food. Hidden wall hallways. Stuff like that. <laughs> hidden hallways. Yeah. Especially not going to say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Get you out there looking. Let's see. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, this is what you said earlier about. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, you said Minions was a crapple. I guess it's going to be it's a boy a crapple. crapple. <laughs> yeah. I would not be shocked. <laughs> boy <laughs> does have some good properties, but on the whole. Name right. one. Sam's Town's a good property. Okay. It's a good property. Lots of, you know, machines in there. Huge area. Big for locals. But the majority, that would be correct for, for that statement. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And Bob says red is the old mob killing room. Yeah, that's what I'm – yeah, <laughs> the red room. <laughs> Those, the, every I mean, time someone mentions the red room, I'll just <laughs> – The red room. Red room. Yeah. Red, room. <laughs> red room. All right, SD guy. I've started oh, this early on. Pull it up. I'm, I'm going to pull it up. We'll talk about it very briefly um, because I don't want to get a whole lot of stuff going. But (laughs) So if you guys haven't seen the video we did on this, I'm trying to be very fair and open here. I'm not trying to destroy anybody's business or anything like this. But there's an application out there called Slot Check. It's available in one casino now um, with more to come. And we did a daily tip on it probably about a month ago now. And I I called it a scam. And I'm going to back that up and explain why I think it is. So the premise of this application is to show you the casino floor and tell you which machines 
are hot, which are cold, which have paid jackpots, how much have they paid, coin in and coin out, all of this stuff, okay? All of this is useless information to you because if you understand how slot machines work, you can they cannot predict the future. There is no hot and cold by programmatically, like programmatic into the machine itself. Machines are not set to do that based off of past events. So it's calling a machine hot or cold is useless information. It's the same thing as the, the board on the roulette table suggesting how many reds and blacks are be. It's the same thing. Nobody can predict what the next spin is going to be on a slot machine. So having this data, I think, is fine. Okay, there, there's no issues with seeing data about past performances on machines. In a way, it kind of tells you the frequency of the hits on the machine overall. My problem with this app, and I think most people would agree, is the language and the marketing material that they're putting behind it. It's very deceiving. Um, they use terms like be educated before you play, be smart, have an advantage, you know, find the hottest machines, you know, be in the smart, be in the know. These are things that you cannot use with an app like this because it's suggesting very strongly that there's an advantage play to knowing what the past data was on a specific machine. And I'm telling you, there is no way to know what the future outcome of that machine is going to be. Why does this bother me so much? And then I'll get off my soapbox because if you guys want to comment on it, fine. Otherwise, I'll take the cake here. But um, the reason this bothers me so much is because the general public does not understand this. You guys do because you're watching us and you've probably watched a lot of our videos. The same with Brantley on Cowboy Slots. We have talked about this exhaustingly for years. There is not there's no such thing as a hot and cold machine that you can use to your advantage does not exist. And so most people don't know that. I didn't know that for a long time. I really felt that if a machine had been fed with a ton of money and nobody hit it, that means it's due because it's got to balance itself. And that's not true. That is not how they work. And people will use that information incorrectly and make bad decisions when they go into the casino. And that is what strongly is a big reason why this channel exists. Is because we want people to have the right information before they make financial decisions about betting on something. That is crucial to the success of this channel is making sure you have all of the facts. You are not clouding your judgment with myths or hot and cold or, you know, machines are setting machines to win and lose whenever they want or casinos are setting them to win or lose whenever they want. You got to clear all that out of your mind and get the right information. And if you do, and you understand that if you want to use an app that says, here's the best performing machines and these are the worst and you want to use that, fine. But you've got to understand that first, that it is not an advantage play. And that's the problem I have with this app. If they want to come out and they on their website or on their app, they want to change your marketing material to not make it very suggestive that it is that kind of app. I will be all for it. I will go on camera and say, you guys did a great job. I'm glad you dialed it down and explained that there is no advantage play on using this data. But they have not done that. They have not responded to me. So I, it, I've got to call it out because it's dangerous. It's dangerous information if you don't have the right understanding of how slot machines work. And I'm not going to back down from that. Um, I just can't. I cannot just do that. I can't do that, <laughs> you know. So if you guys want to comment on it, fine. Um, that's all I'm going to say on the topic. Uh, I agree with Mark. It's a scam. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's a scam. <laughs> Definitely. It, it's they're asking you to pay money for data that you do not need to even pay money to get. That's free data. It's out there. You can go grab it, and it's not well, going to help you. It's like buying a history book. Here's here's the thing too, and this this is not just about slots this this can be about you know roulette it can be about really any anything gambling related there's no data that is going to help you in that moment it, you know it, you could even okay even cherry's jubilee let's let's take a look at cherry's jubilee it is the lowest volatile game that you can play it has the best math model, the most fair math model of any slot machine that you can play. But it's still a slot machine. 
you can still lose at it, even though you could you could sit down and you could trigger that progressive over and over and over again, or you could sit down and not get it at all. It's still a slot machine. And that's that's the thing. If you could have, you know, when when and this goes ties into a lot of other things. We're talking, you know, payback percentage and all that. Like people are, you know, they're like, I, I want to see the data, I want to see the numbers. You could have all the documents for the casino that you're going to. You could have every single number. You could you could even see every single setting on that slot machine. And it's not going to do you a damn bit of good because it's still a slot machine at the end of the day, no matter what it's set at. You're either going to win or you're going to lose. It does not matter. And so an app like this, like Mark said, it's useless data. It's useless information. If if you want to go out and search for data just for funsies, go out and search for data for funsies. It's not going to help you at all. And that is that is a problem because, again, a lot of people are going to use the app and think to themselves, though, it's a hot machine. I'm going to I'm going to play it. And it's just it's not the case. So, yeah, I, I agree with Mark. Long, long rant short. Yep. The Texas Rangers won the uh, World Series last year. That has no bearing on this coming year. Same thing. Exactly. Yeah. And you can look at all the stats in the world because baseball is a statistical game. <laughs> yep. It still is not going <laughs> to predict who's going to win the World Series this year. You can't, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just all we want you guys is to be careful out there. Um, again, I am an app developer myself. I do not like to shit on other people that are trying to run a business. That's not my bag. What? Dollar in the jar. Can I finish my statement first? Because there might be some more. <laughs> um, you know, I, it's tough in this world to create your own business and run it. I totally get that, and I respect that. I really do. Um, but when I see something like this that I I feel very strongly about, I feel like I have to call it out. I just have to. Um, it's not good. It's not good to have that kind of stuff. This is not... Y- I'm not going to get into this. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted from it. I'm exhausted from the comments and all that from the video. It's, you know, I, it's unfortunate, but I, I mean, it's just, you got to be careful, guys. Like, it, it just kills me when I see people in a casino playing recklessly because they didn't read the game rules or they believe in the hot and cold machine. I mean, just, I, I mean, the example I used in that video is so perfect because I can see what the mentality of somebody would be with an app like that. When they're sitting there playing dollars and they're just not winning anything, and then they open the app and says, this $5 machine over here has paid six jackpots today and it's the hottest machine in the casino. And they're gonna think, well, wait a minute, I don't really like playing $5 machines, but it says it's a hot machine, so I'm gonna go play it. Red flag, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be sticking to your dollar denomination. That's yep. and that think about the damage that could potentially do to somebody or or many people. And, and that's he's got he's got to ch- he's got to change the market material. That's all it needs to change on it. You just can't push Let's be honest, push it that it's it's some kind of advantage play. You can't do that. Um, it's and on the same page, he has a thing about responsible gambling. I just I can't I can't deal with it. I It's just not it's not fair. So. All right, I'm. Let's, Mark, let's Mark I think I think my red room is getting your blood pressure high. I know, seriously. <laughs> I, I just need to get off this topic. I blame the SD guy for bringing it up. All right. Well, it's a new important. member from Cheryl Paul. Thank you, Cheryl. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. 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 I said Cheryl. 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 <laughs> Cheryl. All right. All right let's get to some light hearted stuff here. Spice Man here. Spice Man slots. Do you think there will be any casino that will accommodate dogs in the future? My puppy is my best friend, and I don't like leaving her when I go on vacation. There's actually a lot of them. Uh, MGM, Caesars, uh, Cosmo, uh, they all have pet stay rooms. You can actually book that separately. Uh, their price isn't really that much different than a regular room. Uh, there's Mark putting the money in. Uh, Aria, <laughs> I've seen. You. And the same thing with Bellagio and MGM Grand. I've actually seen the pet little areas they have. Uh their artificial turf, and they can go there. Uh, so no, there's a lot of pet-friendly hotels out there uh, all over Vegas. Uh, if you want to bring your dog, look on the website, see a pet policy, make sure you're following it. But I've seen many, 
I've seen many, many in the casino, out of the casino, using those little pet areas, all of it. Uh, oh, this is a good um, okay, man, Leanne. You, <laughs> you nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. I feel it all has to do with people in general never wanting to blame themselves for losing their money. Plain and simple. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> It's like all blame something else. That's it. It's the casino. It's the machine. It's you know the time. The it's the they were tightened it's up. The, the time. It's yeah. a holiday. It's, it's not a holiday. Stopping. Yeah. It's not, it's, I didn't rub the screen enough. Like it's just you were the one the that lost too much. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> very truly and very true. And that's why we just think you should focus on the stuff that you have control over. Like just put all that other stuff out of yep. your mind. And focus on what you you can control. That's what we try to talk about the most. All right, uh, Brantley, I saw this one. You want to go ahead and take it? Yeah. Uh, so, does playing five lines on a nine line max bet hurt the player? Um, it depends on the game, uh, honestly. Like, if it's in most cases, the answer would be yes. But I mean, there's there's a couple games out there that you know you, you should always try to play all available lines. But there's some games out there where it's it's not a big deal if you don't play all of the lines. I mean, we can look at the Ainsworth games, for example. You know, Thunder Cash can go up to twenty lines on some games, but you can still play five and five lines and be just fine, or ten, or whatever the case. Um, but a nine line game, you have to be careful about what kind of game it is. You know, if it's you know, like, say, for example, the new, like, nine-line top dollar or something like that. You know, it's you could be losing out of something, uh, some kind of a feature of the game if you don't have all of those active lines playing. So this this one's, you know, I, I got to default back to the answer is game-specific on that. Very true. Right on. Let's see. And Sabrina is asking, Brantley, I thought you weren't going to Vegas anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, well, so th this trip was uh this trip was not a um I, I have not filmed at all on this trip. Um I don't even have all of my stuff. I mean, if I did, I'd have lights and all of that on me right now. Um but no, I just had to come down for a meeting. It was literally fly down here, go to the meeting. I'm flying home tomorrow morning. Um, first flight out to Salt Lake on Delta. So uh, I will be flying out tomorrow early morning. I got to get back to work and get other stuff done. So, no, I was just coming down here for a meeting. It's not channel related or anything like that. Everyone from Amanda. Uh, there's, oh, oh, I beat you. You got it. Go for it. Best time of year to visit your favorite casinos. Um, in Vegas, it's August. At the hottest possible time you can go. That's where the <laughs> Temperature best hot. time of year to go. Not the it, machines. It's, it's the, yeah, the, not, the machines aren't that hot. Well, the machines might get hot, but not that way. Uh, right. But in Vegas, it's it's summer because the fewest amount of people go. When it's 120 degrees outside, you're going to see the fewest amount of people and generally speaking, the lowest room rates. Uh, other parts of the country, you know, go when you want to go because, you know, if you're going to go to Lake Tahoe, I suggest going in the winter because it's amazing up there. It's just absolutely amazing. The weather's perfect and all that. It. If you can get to it um, <laughs> over in Massachusetts or sorry, over in uh, Connecticut for Foxwoods and Mohegan, uh, we went in uh, January and it was amazing. Uh, I kind of recommend maybe going in October, November for the fall because all those colors up there, they always talk about the colors and we don't get to see those in Texas. We just have summer and winter and that's it. So, but right. yeah, if it's Vegas, it's summer for me because the fewest amount of people are there. It's horrible as well absolutely just walking on the sun hot <laughs> yeah that's when you casino hot more than anything <laughs> just to not sweat so much i know and uh roberto slots hope i said that right uh when a jackpot on a game is maxed out where does the money that normally go to that jackpot go it is still feeding the meter behind the scenes so if it's maxed out at say ten thousand, uh what let's say that you hit it Okay, it's maxed out at ten thousand. You hit it. Instead of starting back at five thousand, it may be six thousand eight hundred twenty-three dollars. It's because it's mm -hmm. still feeding the meter after that maximum point. As soon as it resets, 
it will add that amount to the base. Uh, we've seen people hit it and it's capped out again right after that. That's, that's how long it's been since it's been hit. Uh, so again, the thing that I always remember is that progressives cannot be just given to the house. Like they have to be given back to the player because the players are funding it. The only thing that the casino is funding is that base amount. Everything else has been contributed by the players. And that's why by law, it has to go back to the players in some way. Um, so that's what's going on with the maxed out progressives. So, but it also doesn't give you any indication that it's going to hit because it's maxed out. So many people play it because they think it's due. Play it because it's maxed out and the one next to it isn't. And if you're going to get the progressive, you might as well get the one that's maxed out. Play it for that reason. You know, don't play it because you think it's due anytime soon. So, exactly. Right. I'm going to grab one here from Brian. I'm wondering how hard it will be for Hard Rock to sell those guitar shaped buildings if when they stop making money and want to sell them. Um, I have a feeling when that comes around, that probably looking at demoing the property, you know, when you're buying it for maybe the license, uh, I'm kind of surprised that Hard Rock for Mirage is actually not demoing the whole thing, but the Mirage property is actually really nice. It just needs some, you know, heavy makeup lifting. Uh, but they're building those guitar hotels at every property now. Uh, Rockford Casino in Rockford, Illinois is getting a guitar hotel, and I have no idea why. Um, it seems that as a smaller venue, maybe it wouldn't get one, but sure enough, they're going to build it. Um, and I don't, I really doubt it. If you're coming along to buy a casino, you're not really caring much about it as long as it's got some way to renovate it, if you're going to renovate it. But a lot of places when they're buying properties like that, they're just going to knock it down or maybe they'll change it. You know, maybe they'll make it Nashville rock instead of hard rock. Who knows? And uh, this is a good question. Which is better slots or a game of skills like blackjack game of skills. <laughs> Card games are always better, always better overall uh, than slot machines. Slot machines are the worst uh, when it are comes to player. Three card uh, poker and some of those, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, three they card get pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, blackjack is pretty close. Blackjack I mean, if you play sure. proper strategy and you don't need to do any of the sucker bets and all that, then I think it's around ninety nine point five percent, something like that. It's very close it's, to hard. Uh, yeah, um, um, perfectly played blackjack on um, single to three decks is zero percent house edge. Yeah. So that's really good. Perfectly and even played. when you add in a six deck, it's I think it's a half percent or uh yeah, that eight, maybe that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, the ninety-nine point five on the six deck, which I think yeah. is probably the most popular you see now. The six deck is pretty much the most popular. Yeah. But uh but, but it also I mean, depends if it's six five or three two on the blackjack. That makes yep. a difference on the payback percentage. So Baccarat, uh, yeah, Pacquiao, Pacquiao, slots are the worst <laughs> for overall. <laughs> They play them for their fun, you know. That's you play it for yeah, the it fun. is. It's entertainment. All right, I've been putting this question off from Donna here. Dave, how about you doing a video poker video while you're in Vegas? Uh, Donna, I just don't I don't play video poker. Um, I'm gonna have to learn more about video poker before I make a video on it. Uh, but if you're wanting to know more about video poker, check out Club Mike V over at his channel. Uh, he does almost exclusively video poker and poker related uh content. Uh give that a check out. I, I one day, one day we will make a video poker and you're going to see us like, what do we do here? Let me check the book. Hold on. Time out. <laughs> There'll be a lot of fumbling around, but Dave's keynote video day. will come out. That's yeah, I was keynote video. about to say that. We'll it's play a 30 video, second poker video as soon as Brandley Don't play plays Kino. Kino. <laughs> Here's everything you need to know about Kino. Don't play it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Don't play it. <laughs> Oh well, guys. Uh, unfortunately, I do. I do have to. Yeah, I, I do have to get going here. It's all so, right. um, thank you, Brandon. So I, I will. T I will see you all later. Thanks for letting me on here, um, as always. And I'll bring some of these. I'm bringing some of these pamphlets home. I think maybe we'll oh, we'll talk sure. about them a little bit, little bit later because those are pretty. They're pretty cool. Lots of good information. But I appreciate you guys having me on the show today. Um, yeah. So take care, well, and uh, I'll I'll see you see you later. See you on Sunday. Yep, sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Take care. All right. See you, Brantley. Have fun. Have a good one. All right. I think we'll probably wrap up here. We'll take uh, one or two up, more yeah. and we'll uh, wrap up for tonight. So, Dave, why don't you do the honors? Uh, from Trace the Ace. 
Good luck on your race on Saturday, Dave. Uh, I run both Saturday and Sunday, a total of 30 miles and 100 obstacles. Um, I'm still hurting from the last one, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> I almost sure won't die. <laughs> right. And uh, one here from Buzznet Slots. Hey, guys, I have a confession. I took the key to my gamble box, and it was not oh, good. What? what? <laughs> You kind of defeated the whole purpose of the gamble box by at bringing least, the key with you. At least you admitted it, though. I, at I least you admit it. That's that. true. Being I honest with yourself and your mistakes is important. But yeah. leave the key at home. If you discover that you have the key with you, put it in an envelope and mail it back to yourself That's instead of keeping it around. Or yeah. give it to your buddy or something else. Right. But don't just hold on to it. Just, yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> missing it it's okay we've all done stuff like that so we all done st dumb stuff like that i know sure. you put it in the box you're like i'll take the key just in case just in case <laughs> it's like what if something what happened, happens right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right all right guys i think we'll wrap it up there but thank you so much uh we really do appreciate you being here tonight we had over 400 of you uh in here so, so awesome again thank you very very much and uh you haven't already subscribed we certainly uh hope that you do uh, we have a lot of content and also we did want to plug our website too at gamblesmart.net we've got some new merch up there we also got a few extra sections there we're starting to put all of our uh, daily tips on there so you can quickly access all the ones that we've done uh, we've literally done over 150 at this point can you believe that dave i cannot believe we've it. Done a lot of them <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of good information there so gamblesmart.net and also if you are interested in doing uh, the Las Vegas Advisor coupon book next time you're in Vegas, we strongly recommend it. It's something we did. Uh, we will certainly be back to do it again. But if you go to gsgs.live forward slash book, um, you can purchase the membership there. It's fifty dollars a year. You get the you get the coupon book, but you get a bunch of other stuff with it, and you also help the channel. Uh, so if you are going to give us a donation or super chat, we'd rather you do that and get something out of it. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Link to purchase the book. Thank you so much, Dave. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, guys. As always, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We had a blast. And we will see you on the next video. And gamble smart. Gamble safe. All right, guys. Have a good night. See you soon. Yep. Bye-bye.